Welcome to the On Our Way Home podcast. The goal of On Our Way Home is to encourage you to keep taking steps with Jesus, with a good local church, and with a few close friends so that we will stay on Jesus' path, a path of truth which leads to life with the Father. Welcome to the On Our Way Home podcast today. We're really glad that you're joining with us. And uh, today, uh, I'm your host, Ryan, and I'm joined by Jason, our pastor of... uh, Family Ministries here at Cornerstone, and we are back at On Our Way Home to uh, uh, talk about today, we're not talking about our sermon uh, series through Romans, we are taking some time to refocus on our vision statement for 2023. So, Jason, why is vision so important? Um, Well, because without vision, you're blind, and if you're blind, you don't know, you you can't see where you're going, You, you you know, that, and that's not anything against people who are actually blind. It's just like, um, you know, if you have blinders on, yeah, you 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 can't see um, where you're headed as far as uh, just being able to look at the map. You know, to to be following the steps, to to be going through the the day to day things. Um, you know, you, it, it's kind of it's kind of just like stumbling through life if you if you don't have vision Mm -hmm. you don't know where you're going you don't have any trajectory right um you don't have any way to measure right yeah you don't am i being uh, because we all are doing stuff right in our relationship with jesus you know we're all we i would say you know hopefully we're not overly busy but hopefully we're active in our faith Mm -hmm. but then the question is are we getting any traction in our mission you know are we how are we doing in making disciples? Because if we're really busy, but we're just having meetings and we're not making disciples, right? Yeah, how could that be a problem? No, oh, it can it can definitely be a problem because you end up becoming stagnant. You end up becoming, oh, well, we were talking about it a, a little bit ago, um, like a, a fire that was uh, a campfire that's just left to itself, and it just becomes kind of a glowing embers that may be smoldering just a little bit it there's still life there it's still you know it's got the capability of being reignited but it's just kind of fizzled out and it's not producing any it's not doing anything right if a fire <clears throat> a good back this is the time of the year when we do probably like to get out in our backyards yeah. and enjoy a little time uh maybe at the beach and doing some things campfires are great having s'mores are great but you build the fire you uh ignite the fire with kindling right so it has mm-hmm. to get a, a little spark and and get going but then you have to put fuel on the fire right yep because uh, if you don't put fuel on the fire, it's like it started and you do have to blow, you have to provide some oxygen for the fire. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't have any air, it's not going to take off. Um, you can do some pretty incredible things, I think, with a, uh, a leaf blower and a fire. I wouldn't encourage any of this. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen... Uh, <laughs> There's a show on uh, TV called Forged in the Fire. It's these guys oh, yeah. making blades and stuff like that. Yeah, and this, you take the bellows. And... Yeah, this guy didn't have a backyard fire uh, pit. He didn't have a. He didn't have a uh, an official uh, blacksmithing kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. He just had. He just had a little uh, mini pit, mini little, oh, and and a blow to, and a, a, a leaf blower. And it's like, wow, I didn't really. And the the fire department showed up. Uh, so, oh. <laughs> so things got really hot, really mm. fast. So, but when you're talking about our Christian life, we don't want it to be a hot flash and then nothing. Right. Yep. Yeah. You know, so we want to see, conti- because our mission is to make disciples that make disciples that reach the world for Jesus Christ. So. Right. Yeah. We want to, we want to be able to take, we want to be able to have a, a big, healthy fire so that we can take another piece of kindling and light it from that fire and pass it on and ignite another fire. Right. Yeah. So, and that's a really good analogy. So we don't want to just stay put in Ludington. We want to see God reach Mason County. We want to see God reach Michigan. Mm -hmm. We want to see God reach, we're really talking about a revival of the church that leads to the salvation of people who don't know Jesus. Right. Right. And and so that, that vision has to be really kind of focused. A vision has to be focused, right? A vision can't just be, oh, we want to make disciples because that that's kind of general. Right. Um, so how do you go about doing that? How do you go, what kind of fuel needs to be added to that fire? What kind of, you know, how do we get the oxygen into that fire? And, mm-hmm. and so our, our vision about preaching the word, uh, engaging in prayer, mm-hmm. 
engaging in praise or worship, you know, our worship distinctives, things mm-hmm. like that. And then, and then peopling, being with people and sharing our faith with people, uh, mm-hmm. you know, our, our um, steps in uh, sharing our faith and evangelizing. Um, you know, we've talked about that with, with uh, what you guys, uh, you and Pastor Joel met with uh, Dr. Jenkins, the new Converge president, and that's yes. kind of Converge's new <clears throat> focus as well, is right. making disciples through through evangelism and a culture of evangelism. Right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've, we've talked a lot about worship and our worship distinctives and what real, like, corporate musical worship is and how that is a part of all of it. And so some of that, like, in our in our time... Our personal time, we do some of that where we spend time in prayer. We spend time maybe even worshiping uh, alone, and we spend time Mm -hmm. uh, in the Word. But all of that's great, but we have to come together and and have it corporately, too. We need to spend time in prayer together. We need to spend time in life group together. We need to spend time Mm -hmm. doing things together, serving together, all those things. And they all combine to create this healthy burning flame of of discipleship mm-hmm. of where where we're growing um and and it's a steady burn it's not a it's not where you've got a little flame and, and you've got some lighter mm-hmm. fluid and you're going to squirt <laughs> squirt <laughs> right like, you know. yeah you, yes it has to be sustainable mm-hmm. so um and that means that we have to i think have some regular habits or some structure so that will help us to maintain a good, steady, um, a well-maintained fire. So it's not going to get too hot. You know, it's there may be when you put fresh kindling on a fire or you add fuel to the fire, flames are going to kick up, right? Mm-hmm. So the the hot embers in the bottom, which are really really hot, those things are on fire, right? They're I don't know they're what the te- white hot, yeah, yeah, they're white hot. So there's there's temperatures of the coals, right? So the white hot is going to be hotter than orange hot, which is you know mm-hmm. whatever. So if it's that hot, you put dry kindling on, it's going to burst in the flame in just a few seconds. 1,001, 1,000, poof, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to kick in and, and start to burn. And I think, so we have to have in our church leaders and our congregation who are engaged in these essential kind of things, not everything, <clears throat> because if you're engaged in everything, that's a um, recipe right. for burnout, right? right? Burnout, yeah. So we want the fire to burn. We don't want to be burned out. Right. And, and you know, the, this analogy of fire is so cool because there's so many so many ways that you can look at it, too. Cause with no, the, this, this analogy of fire is really hot. It is really hot. hot. Yeah, it, yeah, okay. But I'm bumped. Dad yeah, joke. All right. Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, and when, when you have that fire... You don't put all the fuel in there at one time, right? You, no. you might have you might have a, a campfire wood pile, right? That's, yes. That's prepared. That wood pile is prepared. You don't you don't go cut down a fresh tree and try to throw a, a newly cut wet log yeah. on on the fire. It's not going to burn. You'll get um, smoke, right? You'll get you'll get yeah. It, it, it's just not going to light. So right. you've got to you've got to have that prepared wood, and that's that's part of like the the leadership part that you're talking about. That fuel that comes on the fire is from people who have been seasoned. They've been prepared uh, through the staff and the elders and the deacons who are are ministering to our congregation, who are leading life groups, who are doing all of those things. And so, yes, we and, and the Word, right? The, the Word is mm-hmm. thousands of years old, and it's been prepared, and it's been breathed. I, I like to think of, of the Word as, like, with the fire, that, that fresh air, that oxygen that gets put in there, because that, that Word is God-breathed, and it's like God breathing that fresh breath of air mm-hmm. to reignite that fire. Right. So mm-hmm. you know, that's, all, a, that's a good word picture. All of those things go together, and they, they all have, you can't have any one of those missing. Right, so mm-hmm. if if you have if you're trying to build a fire in a vacuum, it doesn't work. Right, you, if, need, you need air. If you try to build a fire right. with wet wood, it doesn't work. Right, you know, and if you try to build a fire with with fireworks, it'll it'll blow up in your face, but it won't last. Right, you know, so all of those things and and that fireworks analogy is like you can't just come for a really good worship service on Sunday and yes, I'll be back next Sunday. I mean that's great, but right. you, there has to be something that sustains that fire throughout the week that keeps that fresh fuel on there and that fresh air in there, and you've got to do that intentionally because if you don't do it intentionally, you're going to fizzle out. Right. 
it has to be more than a July 4th fireworks thing. We're getting ready to have our celebration in mm-hmm. Ludington pretty soon here. You know, a fireworks display is great. You know, there's lots of oohs and ahs mm-hmm. and a great worship service. You know, the sermon was just incredible and just penetrated into my soul. And I felt like God was speaking directly to me. And and then you might have gone forward or made a decision for Christ or recommitted your life for Christ or recommitted to a step of, you know, action. But then Monday happens. Right. So now what's going to happen on Monday? Do we have any friendships? This is the people part. We'll tie, we'll kind of break down each of our component parts for our, our vision statement. But are, are there people in my life mm-hmm. that uh, are going to hold me accountable? Right. Or be praying for Support me. Support me, encourage me, lift me right. up. Yeah. And that I can encourage. Mm-hmm. Um, is there, what is my prayer life like? Because if it's, if I'm trying to live my Christian life just on, with me, with no God support, right. if I'm not relying on the Holy Spirit, it's going to be a pretty empty exercise. Right. Am I praying as a first response or a last resort? Am I praying right. without ceasing or am I praying when everything ceases? And I'm, am I praying with others, right? right. So there's a, th- these things are all interconnected like, you know, it's like h- hands or fingers in, interconnected. Mm-hmm. You, you know, th- you can't pull that apart real easily. If nope. they're interlaced and they're interlocked and they're more points of contact, it's going to be really difficult right. to pull that apart. What is my praise life like? We're commanded to praise, and we're mm-hmm. going to be refocusing our church on praise um, over the next four Sundays. Five uh, Sundays. Five Sundays well, coming. No, four because of the. We'll have our mission Sunday. Mission in Sunday. Here. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yep. So Joel Schaefer will be coming to speak uh, pretty soon on Christmas in July. Yep. A gospel-centered discipleship, which kind of all it'll all tie together with mm-hmm. where we're going as a body. Uh, but then, and the Word of God too. So the Word of God. Starts with prayer first. Prayer, the word of God, praise, and then people reaching mm-hmm. reaching people or being a part being of with people being re- with yeah, people sharing your faith. Yep. Right. So um, it starts with prayer. Prayer is essential to our our life with with God and mm-hmm. to seeing God work in our in our body in our community. Um, but we struggle. I think prayer is really hard work. So, it is. So, it, well, it can be at first, at least to get a, a, a habit, uh, you know, a pattern. And not drift. Started. I was talking yeah. with a couple guys this morning. We started a new Every Man a Warrior group. And so part of that, having a passionate relationship with Jesus is based on prayer. Mm-hmm. So communicating with God and having God communicate with you either through His Spirit or through the Word of God or the Word of God through the Spirit's Igniting it, right? Bre- you know, uh, through that breathing process, you know, the, the ignite. God's word can sometimes break us free from something if we're struggling or if we need fresh, uh, fresh, fresh wind, fresh fire. I think is what Jim Simbola wrote in one of his mm-hmm. books. So God's word is able to help change our life if we're stagnant. God's word can just penetrate because um, it's living and active, right? So, right. but. Okay, so I'm all over the place. We're well, talking about the Word, and yeah, we're, talking we're talking about, about prayer. And yes. so, so prayer, um, it can feel like work at first, but it, it's it's kind of like um, you know relationship with a, a girlfriend or a wife, you know, where you you don't have much of a relationship if you never speak to one another. You, there, there's no building of of passion for each other if you never spend any intentional time together, right? And just as in any relationship, if one person does all the talking, there's no real relationship there either. So prayer isn't just us spouting off all of our worries, concerns, needs, whatever mm-hmm. requests to God. There, there's so much more to prayer, and this isn't. We're not going to go into the whole like structure of prayer, but yeah, um, you know, the, it's a it's a two way street, and sometimes it's just sitting in silence and concentrating on God, concentrating on your relationship with Him, and just allowing Him to 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 breathe over you and to speak over you, and and so, um, you know, it's. It's a necessary, essential part. It, it, uh, no marriage will ever work if the two people don't talk to each other. Right. And and so no relationship with God will ever work if you don't spend time in prayer. You you can do, you can come to church on Sunday. You can even hang out with other Christians. But if you're never spending any time actually talking to God, yeah. You know, and and yes, God knows the thoughts of your heart. He already knows what you're going to pray. But 
Yeah, he talks about prayer, and so when he comes, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith that is still praying? That's the persistent widow right. yep. an analogy, or the the parable of the persistent widow. We we need to keep on uh, seeking, asking, and knocking, right? Mm-hmm. And so we need to be working on our prayer relationship with God. I think. Um, one of our previous podcasts was with you and uh, Roy, and we were talking about a holy discontent. Mm-hmm. I think part of the prayer process is being not satisfied with where we are right now and wanting God to do something that looks a lot more like the book of Acts than you know where we right. are today. Yeah. Yeah. So Not settling for status quo. Right. Not settling yeah. for the status quo. Are we happy just to have church services, or do we want to see people being saved? Mm-hmm. Do we want to see people not only saved, but now discipled? Do we want to see several generations, you know, this person got saved and, and was discipled. Now they're going to, they led someone else to the Lord right. and now they're discipling. And now they're three or four or five generations deep right. and yeah. they got saved, someone discipled, they got, you know, that sort of multiplication yes, yes. is scriptural, biblical, should be normative Christianity. And it's like, but I don't see it. So I think part of my prayer relationship with God, sometimes I'm just frustrated with me or I'm frustrated with the the church in general, or maybe Mm -hmm. it's our church that I have some sense of frustration with. And it's like, God, what, what am I not doing right? What do I need to add? And what do, or what do I need to spend more time doing? And I think that prayer is one of those things. It's like, well, Ask me to bring change. Right, yeah. This isn't like a legalism thing. This isn't like no. a, we, we need to do step A and B for God to move. No, but He calls us into relationship with Him. Right. He calls us to call Him. If you read through the Psalms and you see the frustration of David and, and all the things that he he said, you know, God, where are you? How long are you going to stay away? Right. You know, when are you going to move? We need to see your hand move. Right. You know, and yeah, that was Old Testament, and but it still applies. The attitude of knowing that God can do things and he's actually waiting on us to recognize that apart from him we can't do it right and and Mm -hmm. being able to rely on him and and speak that and and acknowledge that and so it's not a legalism it's not a trying to check the blocks so that god will do what he's supposed to do when i do what i'm supposed to do yes not a mechanical it's 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 really about Mm -hmm. relationship it's about it's about really knowing god knowing his heart and and just being vulnerable with God, even though, yes, you know, he's omni- omniscient. He knows the thoughts of your heart and intentions of your heart, but it's it's intentionally decompartmentalizing your heart and saying, you know what, God, you have all of me. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, well, this is my work life and this is this and this is that, and I'll pray during my church part. Right, um, right. You know, it's it's allowing, really... Yeah, allowing prayer to get into every single part of our day. right. You know, whether we're at work or we're at home or uh, with our children or with our wife or with, you know, friends or whatever, allowing prayer to, you know, pray without ceasing, right? Right. So, allowing prayer. And prayer will uh, allow us to see if we're asking God to move, if we're asking for opportunities to share our faith, if we're praying for people to receive Christ as their Savior, if we're praying for a revival, you know, right. in, in my heart. And so that'll, that's very, very important. It all has to start with prayer, I right. think. Asking God to correct any wrong thoughts, wrong feelings, wrong attitudes in, in right. ourselves about the things that are going on in our, our community, in our world, and, you know, things that we could easily get frustrated about and, and right. you know, asking God to give us eyes of compassion and, and seeing the enemy for who he is and not treating others like the enemy and, you right. know, all those kind of things that... Right. that through that conversation with God can actually bring redirection and clarification and 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 help us to focus in the right areas and be energized and and ready for those moments when we encounter someone to share our faith with. Right. Because if, if you haven't prepared in prayer and God presents somebody in front of you that needs to hear the gospel, but you're all tied in knots over all this other stuff that you haven't given to God and you mm-hmm. haven't then you're not going to be fruitful. Right. You might not be ready. So prayer is a great preparation, and it's great. It's a great first step. Um, then the Word of God is also essential. So mm-hmm. we need God's Word to... Uh, we need to live God's Word. We need to think God's Word. We mm. need to pray God's Word. We need to sing God's Word. Um, so that it's all... All these things are all interconnected. But God's Word 
uh, is really important. But I think that um, without relationships with other people or without some kind of a structure, you don't want to just play a Bible roulette, you know, where right, you yeah. open your Bible to Let's whatever. See what God has to say to me today. Boop. It's like, oh, it's Leviticus, or oh, and, and there's yeah. good stuff in Leviticus. Um, yeah. but there's good stuff in Numbers. There's good stuff. All th- all scriptures God breathed, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that you know, if you do not have a a plan or a, a system for reading through all of the scriptures, um, and it's like, well, I'm not I'm not there yet. Well. Yeah. W- same thing with prayer. It's like, you know, we're not prescribing a certain amount of time to pray no. or, you know, I think you just need to start, yep. you know, so spend, you know, a minute in prayer or spend two minutes in prayer or uh, it's like, you know, uh, working out. I'm not going to be able to bench press a lot of weight right away. It's going to take me some time. So uh, five minutes in prayer mm-hmm. or a list, just a short list or some things, maybe just the Lord's Prayer that you would kind of use that as a guide right. to start. But with God's Word, we need to be reading it. And not only just we need to not read it for the sake of reading it. Did you read God's Word today? Yes. Check, you know, right. and it's like, yeah. well, what was it? Well, I don't know. I just remember. <laughs> I just so it has to be more than just reading God's word. Um, it needs we need to kind of interact with it or allow right. God's word to interact with us. Um, what's the power of God's word interacting with us? What kind of stuff can God do when we're interacting with His word? Oh, or, man, just about anything. Like he He can even even when you're going through like a systematic reading program, just to kind of keep track of where you're at and everything. Mm-hmm. There, there's times where something, just the next chapter, the thing that you're supposed to read today or whatever, will speak into exactly the situation you're in or exactly the attitude that you mm-hmm. have, exactly mm-hmm. the, the hurt that you're facing, whatever it is. Um, so, like, God's Word is active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. You know, it, it's, it, it's all of those things that we need because it is the very Word of God. It, it, you know, it it's... It's something that um, is applicable to every moment. It's relevant, even though it was written, you know, over two thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. It's amazingly relevant to today, right. and, and so it can meet us where we're at. We we don't change, right? We we tend to be selfish. There's nothing new under the sun, right? We tend to struggle with, you know, it's like I just want an easy life. You know, we just want to we I just want to experience pleasure or excitement. I don't want hard things in my life. Uh, I don't like trials. Um, I would rather just hit coast, you know. Right. And, but then we read things like James says, "Count it all joy, my brothers, when you face various trials." Like. Uh, Joy, like right. Why? So, so that's going to smack us in the face, and you know, and that's going to help us. God's word can help challenge our, mm-hmm. you know. It's like, well, I want to. Uh, in your Christian life of discipleship, there probably will come times when you do have to suffer, oh yeah, and struggle. And so, if you have the mentality that that's bad, then you're not going to keep going. You're gonna, the fire's going to die out. Right. right. It's like, oh, this is too hard. I'm not going to put any more of myself on the fire. I'm, you know, not putting any wood on the fire. I'm right. out. Right. And when, when we when we spend time in God's Word each day, um, you know, to the point where systematically going through His Word, we've read the same things over and over again. I can tell you that you can read something today that you read a year or two ago and mm-hmm. see something completely different. Not that it changed, but... Yeah, some, because of the mm-hmm. the growth, your spiritual growth in you, you see it in in a different. You see it in the context of of the book that's written, or of you know all kinds of things, and and it can speak to. You. And and the more you read, the more your spirit is going to be able to connect all the pieces from each different thing. Mm-hmm. You know, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from the Gospels to the letters, all of those things. Right, and and you get a bigger picture of who God is. You get a bigger picture of the life He has for you. You get a bigger picture of who the enemy is, of his tactics, of mm-hmm. um, the gifts that God has given you through the Holy Spirit to do certain things. And, and, and it just becomes a bigger, clearer picture where if we mm-hmm. just rely on the sermon or Sunday school or whatever else, and that's mm-hmm. all the feeding we get, mm-hmm. we're not ever going to get to the point where we can put those pieces together. So God's Word um, 
it's it's necessary to be in it systematically and going through it over and over and over again mm-hmm. because it will completely build upon itself and and you'll grow in your understanding. So some of it is about head knowledge. You you can't you can't live under the authority of something you don't know. You don't you, right. you know you have, to, mm-hmm. you have to have you have to have it in your mind. Right. Which, which you know to to break the analogy of um, of the the Bible with kind of the the constitution that's why we have a big problem in america right now most people have no idea the authority of the constitution they live under they don't know what the amendments are they don't know whatever yeah, you know they, they just think i'm an american i'm free right. and, and so you know yeah you haven't read it you got like, you got to know what it says to know right. how mm-hmm. it works to know how to live under it same thing with the the scripture you can't just say i love jesus god is love and not know what the bible actually says about god's character his attributes mm-hmm. you know his expectations, his justice, his mercy, his great. You, you're not gonna. You gotta. You gotta feed that through the word because he's given us. First Peter says he's given us everything for life and godliness. Yeah. You know he's given us all the tools. He's given us all the the equipment. He's given us everything that we need through his word and the Holy Spirit to be a, and each other to be able to piece it all together and live under the authority of his word mm-hmm. and. You know, it it is a little bit about head knowledge when it comes to that. You've got to know what the word says, but you can't. So Christianity is not a leap of blind faith, right? So God has given us all of this information in His Word, so that our faith isn't blind. It's a step of obedience, right? So faith is the flip side of of uh, the other coin of faith is obedience, right? So you know you believe because you do what you're told to. You know, right. God says to pray always. So by faith, I'm going to pray, even when it seems like it might not be working. Right. My obedience is evidence of my faith. Correct. Yeah. So Abraham believed God. You know, so he trusted God. He God said leave. He left, mm-hmm. and he went to where the place where God wanted him to go. Um, Hebrews 11 is a great chapter if you're struggling in your faith. Faith, because by faith, Noah built a boat. By faith, Moses left Egypt. By faith, you know, there was an action on the other side right. of the faith. Yep. So, um, and and that's the way it should be in our, our life as well. So, a, a lot of times, God's Word, the promises are there to help us, like you said, to have a bigger picture of who, an actual picture of who God is. Right. Maybe sometimes we just get discouraged and it's like, I just don't, you know, we've lost sight of who God is. Mm -hmm. And then reading through Exodus, we might be reminded, oh, he's a God who can split the sea wide open, you know, or then we could sing a song, uh, you, what is that praise song um, that we've been singing lately? You You split the sea so so I I could walk walk right through through it. it. Yeah, so that's a... that's the uh, I am a child of God, yeah, right? Yeah. So Zach Williams song. Mm-hmm. So that song, so here we have the interlocking pieces again. This song reminds me of the scripture in Exodus, which is a promise I can pray right. and encourage some other people in God's word. So we have to be actually a part of a local body of believers. Right. Yes, you do. So if you're not currently attending or partic- regularly participating active in a body of believers, that's that's very essential. So that you can pray and you can read God's word and uh, have some reading, you know, a reading plan or someone who's going to hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. So having a reading plan is great, but having a reading plan where you can, you're going to ask me every week, right. talking talking about what you've read, talking about what spoke to you and in, in what you've read, those right. kind of things. Yeah, and that's processing the, it. That's the principle that we're working on in Every Man a Warrior mm-hmm. right now too. So in that, in as we're working through this. You can tell I'm selling every man a warrior, by the way. But um, it's a good process for men. And if you are not a man in an every man a warrior group or you have not been in an every man a warrior group, we're just going to pray that God would lead you to be a part of this. You're going to be starting a group here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. And I started one this morning with a couple guys. So the process is you um, are reading the Bible and keeping a journal of the passage you read the best verse from that yeah, and the yeah. key thought, the main, like your main bullet point from the day that you're in is, was there a promise to obey? Right. Was there yeah, a, pro- a, a promise to, yeah, claim. A promise, a cl- to claim a, a, a uh, command to obey, a sin to avoid. 
Uh, what's the other one? Something uh, new about God. Yeah, something new about God. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so there's there's five questions that you can. So you'll be circling. Uh, does this verse talk about this? Oh yeah, there is a there is a sin to avoid here. And mm-hmm. so, or is there an application to make? Yeah. What does right. God want me to do? And then you're going to share what you read. The, your bullet point and your best verse with your with your friends, your buddies, when you get together, you get to share one of your quiet times during the week. Right. That habit, so now you're actually doing, you've interacted with God's Word, and now you're sharing what you've read with someone else and how God spoke to you in it. Right. That's huge. Yeah, it is. It's, it's making you process it. It's, it's forcing, forcing you to, to develop an application and to... Not just you know read and for reading's sake, but reading for the purpose of finding what God is saying to you in that passage, right? Um, which is something that is is so important because God's word never returns void, right? It, it's never it's not empty. It's not empty. You're not you know yes, and, but it also isn't meant for you to just read and then go okay, God, <laughs> right? You know, like you're you're supposed to. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You're supposed to, you know, got to do something. You got to do something. You got to put your foot to the to the ground. You got to, you got to, you 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 can't walk without taking steps. Yes. In our previous podcast, Roy was talking about at what point do you become a fisherman? This is the Holy Discontent podcast. If you haven't seen that podcast, I think that was just a really that's 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 a really oh man, we need more Holy Discontent. Mm-hmm. Not sticking with the status quo, but it, Rory raised the question: At what point do I become a fisherman? You know, and I was just thinking um, about your sons playing baseball and stuff. And it's like, at what time do you become a baseball a, a hitter? Is do you become a hitter when you look at Ted Williams videos, or you watch, you know, or you watch, you go to a game and watch the game, right? Um, you buy well, a really expensive bat, and, right? You know, so, you, you got or, cleats, or you've yeah. or you've read a book on how to hit. No, it's when you get in the batter's box, the pitcher throws the ball, and you swing. Yep, you swing. That's when you become a hitter. And so Christianity has to be practical. If it if it doesn't work in real life, why in the world would I ever do It's just a waste of my time. Right, and, and with that analogy, it takes practice. You know, you're not going to get in the batter's box against right. Justin Verlander, and or he pitches Matt Scherzer or, or whoever. Or, yeah, right. you know, uh, and he throws you a pitch in the 90 plus mile an hour or whatever, and you swing and miss and go, oh man, and right. throw the bat down and walk away and never do it again. No, right? You got to go to batting practice. Right, you got to go to batting practice. You got to just you one see day. hundreds of pitches. You've got to take hundreds of swings. Right, thousands you know. of swings. You're probably going to be a better batter after. You know, you've been. I mean, how many at bats do you have to have in order to get better? Um, yeah, thousands. You, yeah. you need a lot of at bats. So you, we actually have to get into the batter's box. We need to be reading God's word. We need to be praying. We need to be not only knowing what we need to do, but then we need to be taking steps to apply it. And that happens. Um, with people. So we'll, we'll talk about the people part and then we'll just kind of maybe wrap up with the mm-hmm. praise praise part. So the people, we need people in our life to help us grow spiritually. Yes, the Christian life has never been meant to be in isolation. Even Jesus didn't do it in isolation. But Jason, sometimes I don't like people. Yeah, me either. <laughs> you know, I, and, and sometimes people don't like me. So, you know, it, it's, at least it goes both ways, it right? It, it goes both ways. You know, yeah. So, so, how can we make sure that we're not so ticked at people or frustrated by people? Because God's means of one of the means that God uses to make us holy and fully equipped disciples. Is people? Yeah, iron sharpens iron. And, we have you know. to we have to be discipled by someone, and we have to be discipled by someone, or we need to be discipling someone. And Jesus's model was one on twelve, right? So he had people, and sometimes he did need to tell them, you know, oh, you of little faith, how long is it going to take you guys to get this? You guys have been with me so long, and you mm-hmm. still don't know who I am. There, there is a frustration, right? A holy discontent with where people are, but I think grace has to play a part of this too, right? Mm-hmm. So we give people grace 
I just I want people to extend grace to me. Yeah, you can't expect something you're not willing to give, and that that, that can be hard. Right? And we need to be able to forgive one another. So this is one of the mm-hmm. if you Jesus said if you do not forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. So forgiveness is actually a huge part of it this is, yeah. people. So our when our relationships go south, which they sometimes do. We need to love people enough to have a personal conversation to restore the relationship. Right, yeah, even inside that twelve, Jesus pulled some aside. You know, he had his group of three that were a little bit tighter. Yeah. Um, you know, but there were times that he pulled one or two aside and, and talked to Peter, them. Peter, James, and John got yeah, a chance to see know, the transfigured Christ on the mountain. Not everyone saw that. Right. And and then there's there's also when you think of Jesus and his disciples, there's also the aspect that you might be working hard to disciple someone who's just not gonna get it. Right. You know, Jesus always knew that Judas was there and he loved him anyway. Right. And he counted him anyway and he gave him responsibilities anyway. You know, that that yeah, the that's story a, of that's Judas a, that's, that, a mind, that's the one that gets yeah. me because yeah. you know, from the very beginning Judas Jesus knew that Judas was going to be the one to betray him and he loved him anyway. Right. You know, and so we're going to have to deal with hard people who may be, you know, not that we have that foresight of knowing, yeah, this guy's going to throw me under the bus, but, right. you know, it may be that, that tough egg to crack where it's going to take more work and it's going to take more intentionality and, and, and you don't know what's going to happen, but you put in that effort anyway, because, because that, that encourages others. Because the, the cool thing about discipleship is it is a two-way street. When, when you're discipling someone, just the act of discipling someone further disciples yourself. You right. have to dig deeper. You have to be more prepared. You have to be more in the right. Word. You have to be mm-hmm. more in prayer. You know, you don't get to a certain point where it's like, okay, I don't have to pray anymore. I can go teach everybody anything I know. Right. But no, discipleship's a two-way street. It, it, it really, it really does. The more you disciple, the more discipled you become. I was listening to Kurt, uh, one of our guys. Kurt uh, was in a. Uh, Every Man of Warrior group with one of his guys. Yes, I am talking about Every Man of Warrior again. Um, <laughs> so he was in a group with his guys, and one of the guys said, I think we need to start praying for God to make us um, to have a step out of our comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kurt's been a believer for a lot of years, just tons of years. Grew up in the church as a baby, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but this new guy coming back to faith in Christ said, I think we need to start praying for God to take us out of our comfort zone. And Kurt, in his humility, said, I don't think I'm ready to pray that prayer. Because do you know what you're asking? You're yeah. really asking mm. God. And so this new guy says, I think we need to be praying for God to get us out of our comfort zone. And Kurt said, it took me a while, but I started to begin to pray that prayer. Mm -hmm. So here you have a new guy coming back with an old seasoned veteran um, who still needs to learn, who still needs to be be challenged. Yes, who still needs. And so I think that we need to be open to the process of discipleship, which is messy, and it's Mm people-oriented. You know, a lot of us do like tasks because they don't involve people. You know, so you can get, just give me a fence and my screwdriver mm-hmm. and a hammer, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to take care of this this project. Right. And, but, and, and we need, you know, that, that that is a necessary aspect of it, but we also don't need to be doing every project alone. Right. right. And people are not projects. Right. People are not, that's good. Yeah. People are not projects. People are yeah. people. You know, so yeah. I just not, you know, if I don't like you, I'm just not going to go take you on my uh, my table saw and cut off the parts of you that I don't like. Thank you. You know, this, <laughs> look, there's a, Jason is a lot nicer. He's more like me. You know, it's like, well, who, that's not, that's not yeah. going to help. God did not make us all the same. No. Yeah. And so we need, we're, there's going to be, we need to, uh, as we're following Jesus, we should be loving people more. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's a good diagnostic question. How, what do I think about people that God has placed in my life right now? What do I do? Am I loving my church family more? Do I want to spend more time with a few people? Mm-hmm. Or, or I'm, am I just burned out? Do I have no space for people. People are so frustrating to me. I just, I, I don't like people right yeah, now. And, and God can change our hearts to make that 
flow better. Now, the, the interesting thing is it doesn't necessarily ever become easier. We just become better at it because we become more in tune with how the Holy Spirit is working in someone's life and what the, how the love of God, what the love of God looks like. Right. Um, and, and it's not... It's not always bubblegum and roses, you know. It's yes. Yeah, sometimes it's hard, but sometimes it can be a good hard. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're working through a conflict resolution, and you finally, you did work through it. You didn't, You maybe you dreaded the conversation. Maybe you didn't know how it was going to go, but you prayed about it. You were trusting God for it, and then things things worked out. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, on the other side, I mean, that's really good. And then uh, we want to wrap up. So it's messy, but we want to praise, I think, is something that's really, really important that we want to keep growing in our praise right, of God. Know. So we, we don't want to be stagnant in any of these areas. Why, what happens when we become active in pursuing God in praise? Oh, man, so many things. Um, so you, you, you grow in your love for Him mm-hmm. um, because you're expressing your love for Him. Right. So... You know, in in Romans, we see that that we're supposed to be not conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds, mm-hmm. and and that that's our spiritual act of worship. You know, we we offer our bodies a living sacrifice. That's our spiritual act of worship, mm-hmm. and so praise and worship are the same but different. So praise and wor- everything we do is a, is an act of worship. Our our prayer is an act of worship. Our peopling is an act of worship. Our Word. how we mm-hmm. how we do our yeah, how we do our job, you know, are we doing everything in a way that glorifies God? That's that's honoring the gospel that honors Christ, you know, those things. Mm-hmm. But praise is specifically when we take that time to hone in our thoughts to to focus on God. Who he is, his majesty, um, you know what what he's done for us, and mm-hmm. reciprocate back to him the the gratitude that we have for being showered by his grace, mm-hmm. and in that there's there's a renewing, a refreshing, and and so it's it it takes us out of the. The everyday, mundane, whatever. When we just really, and and you can even do it when you're driving in your car, you know. Right. That, mm-hmm. And it doesn't always have to be music, um, mm-hmm. but you know, just being able to proclaim back to God mm-hmm. who He is, what He's done. Um, you know, th- that's why you know man didn't create music. God gave music to man. Right. So we, mm-hmm. we have the ability to to develop music and rhythm mm. and instruments and all of mm-hmm. those things um, as a way of expressing. So the, the, the really cool thing about praise mm-hmm. is it is more expressive than any of these other things. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it's, it's the way that we can express our feelings, our love, our mm-hmm. relationship, our mm-hmm. gratitude, all of those things back to God in a way that glorifies Him, honors Him, because that's, you know, that, that's the chief end of man. That's the thing mm-hmm. that we are created for is to mm-hmm. glorify God. Right. And so it brings Him glory. It, you know, we, we lift up the name of Jesus when we praise Him, and that does something in our spirits that, that refreshes us, it revives us, it rejuvenates us, it, right. it restores us. Right. You know, and you can, you can pray, you can be a, a very um, meticulous reader of Scripture, mm-hmm. you can be involved in one-on-one discipleship, you know, small group, every man a warrior type discipleship. But if you yeah. never take the time to just get before God and, and you know, just let it all go yeah, and, and right. raise your hands and, and, and just sing out your heart, you know, I, it, I'll just, I'll go there. It, it breaks my heart when I see people singing in worship, like, La 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 la. Like, are <laughs> right. we just going through? Is this done yet? Right, like, just going through the like, motions, right? Mm-hmm. Your your Lord died for you and rose from the dead to save you from your sins, to pay the penalty for your sins, and you, yeah, like just worship. Oh man, yeah. it's so good when you just worship. Yeah. Um, 
There needs to be some engagement. Right. First Peter says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession. So for his we, possession, yes. So that the reason that we're God's people, that he made us his people, so that we may, may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So one of the reasons that God saved us is so that we could proclaim his praises. Right. We yeah. could praise him. And that's why we need this next little sermon series to reignite, yeah, reignite that. this yep. this praise. Um, I was, where was I? I was driving up to uh, uh, Lake Ann Camp. Uh, my daughter forgot something and I had to run up on a Sunday oh to, to uh, give her a backpack that she misplaced or something, didn't get packed. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to listen to, I'm, I'm going to purposefully just listen to some praise on, uh, and I pulled up, uh, what was it, something on uh, Spotify. Uh, it was some songs from the Worship Initiative mm, or something like that's that. That's what I've been listening to lately, too. Mm. So I was like, these are new songs that I wasn't familiar with, and I was just, I just listened and then started trying, I like to sing along if I can, you know, I listen to it a couple, the song and oh, we're back to the chorus. Maybe I can try and sing along. There's an engagement that needs to happen. And it's like, it doesn't depend on how well you sing or how w- right, well yeah. you don't, or it how poorly. doesn't matter if you know how to sing well or not. No, it doesn't. It's not meant on musical ability. God just wants us, our engagement. So yep, Sing his praises. Right. Yep. So it's both left brain and right brain. Mm-hmm. You have the words and the melody. So It, it uses your whole body. Yes, it really it's does. A, yeah. Yes. This is, so it's. Worship is meant to be a full contact sport. Mm-hmm. Your brain, your your emotions, your body, you know, you're engaging. It's like you know that someone is all in when the words of their mouth and their their body mm-hmm. language is expressing, you know, it's not just external, it's not just it's not definitely a show. It's to engage right with God with passion energy, focus, declaring his praises, relying on his word, praying together. It's it's just like an it's right. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a release. And and yeah. it, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why when in corporate worship when the entire congregation mm-hmm. is singing and it's just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Even if you got somebody who's off key, you know, it, it just doesn't God doesn't care. And you, you, know, you don't and notice in a large you group don't notice, like, yeah, no. And, you know, it's no, not, no, no. It's not worrying about what the person sitting in front of you thinks or is doing or not doing yes it's it's, let's all go yeah and to worship god let's all get in the same boat let's all pick up an oar and let's start we are going to praise god we're moving in the same direction and we are going to get to our destination of seeing god's glory revealed because we're talking about what scripture has said who he is and give thanks for what he's done for us it, it revives that yeah that um understanding of who we are in him and like david said who am i that you even know right. me that right. you even like like it, it helps us to to refocus on just the absolute grandeur and amazement of who our god is yeah and because when when we don't praise when when, when you don't go through a cycle of of spending time in praise and just you know Realizing, you know, this is my Abba Father. This, you know, yes, mm-hmm. I, He is Father God, and He is the one who has the that I stand before, and you know, but I have access to Him. Hebrews tells me that I have, right. I can boldly, not arrogantly, go before the throne. But I can boldly, I, with confidence, because He's He's my Father and He's adopted me. Right, and I'm going to start singing here in a minute. But you know, it's just like <laughs> you just you get to focus on. God sitting on his throne in heaven and he right. cares for you and he's done all of this for you and Jesus has done all this for you and mm-hmm. and he's sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for you and who am I that he should know me? I'm so small, insignificant, but yet I was fearfully and wonderfully made yeah. and I praise God. Right. And and when when you when you dig into that, it just it reignites that desire for his word. It reignites right. that desire yep. for his people. It reignites this, that desire to go and share him. If God isn't big to you, if Jesus isn't big to you, yeah. you're not going to share him. Right. So praise is a great th- way to help realize who God is, what he's done, and to kind of, it's like that little spark thing maybe that can help us. And we do have a praise night coming up this coming mm-hmm, Sunday yeah. night. So down at the Marina uh, B- Banshell area, down at the Marina Park, 
uh, water park, we will be having a night of praise and worship, and so led by Jake, our worship leader. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. We invite you to join that. We invite you to join us for this coming Sunday to hear God's word preached. We invite you to take a step. So we're not going to get to spiritual maturity overnight. It's mm-hmm. a long. It's a long process. We've our vision statement. I think I'm really so happy with it, and it because not because you know we created it or anything like that, but because I think it talks about those key component parts that absolutely positively have to be in our life to see us making disciples that make disciples. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this uh, podcast has been an encouragement and or a challenge to you. We haven't arrived yet. We we have a lot of room to grow. In Um, eternity. Right. But we're going to grow together. By God's grace. Yep. So yep. Um, thanks so much for watching and listening to the On Our Way Home podcast today. We will catch you next time. Mm-hmm.